my soul. He leadeth me in the pathway of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We are strangers before thee and sojourners as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow and there is none abiding. O Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days what it is that I may know how frail I am. For I know that thou will bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. But I would not have you ignorant concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building. We have a building of God, a house 
not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. For it is appointed unto men once to die. And after this, the judgment. We must all appear before that judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad. Good morning and God's blessings to every last one of you that have come, have taken time out of your day to come and join with us, the entire Stewart family, to also join with the South Liberty Missionary Baptist Church family, to join with every last one of the clergy here in Madison County to celebrate the life and legacy. Y'all must have missed me right there. I said thank you for coming to celebrate the home going of our dear brother, Pastor Marcus Stewart. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And y'all know as well as I know that Stuart is looking down upon us right now saying don't be sitting up in there crying and looking sad. Y'all need to give the Lord some praise and you know he didn't take no junk. So we need to do praise our God what we know good and well he would have wanted us to be doing on this day. I am Pastor Antoine Barlow, pastor here, South Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. I'll serve as program guide on this occasion. This day is set so that we might hear the foundation which was laid, which was walked upon for years and years and years by Marcus Stewart, the foundation of the word of God. To that end, we must have the word of God spoken at this very moment, Reverend Robert Kelly is coming with our Old Testament scripture. He'll be followed by Reverend Cleotha, Cleotha Williams with our New Testament scripture and then a prayer by the Reverend Lawrence Conway. Our scriptorial reading from the Old Testament will come from Psalms. 121 and it reads I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee will not slumber behold he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in 
from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Farewell to a brother, a friend, a colleague, a classmate, and a soldier. Our New Testament scripture comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. It reads, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not Prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are asleep and remain, we which are alive rather and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with him. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. 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 Thank want to thank you, Lord. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, it is yet again another time. A few of your handmade servants have come to this house, this house of worship and this house of prayer. God, before we ask you for anything, God, we just come to tell you thank you. God, we come to tell you thank you for life, health, and strength. And God, we thank you for things being as well as they are. Now, God, as we come in this place, we've come from the north, south, east, and the west. To come to this place to bid this, our brother and our family member, a goodbye on this side. But God, you said in your word, if we live right and we will see him again on the other side. So we've come, God, to celebrate the life of this Pastor Marcus Stewart. And God, and as we come, we come celebrating God. But God, we come praying also for his wife, his children, the grandchildren, and his siblings, God. We stand before you, God, telling you, God, in the midst of what they're going through, we stand with them and for them. We stand as strength with them in the midst of what they're going through. God, continue to drive them so close together that one can't fall for the other. And God, we thank you, God, for just doing what it is that you do all these years. You've allowed Marcus to have a lot of stale and corny jokes, God. But in the midst of him telling his crazy jokes, God, he had a point at the end of every crazy joke. And God, we say thank you on today. 
We give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you, God, that even in the midst of his body going down, he still had a reason to give you praise. And so that's why we've come today, God, to rejoice. We don't come on a sad occasion, but God, we've come to rejoice and tell you thank you, God. There were days that he didn't have such good days. But God, we couldn't tell because he kept telling you, thank you in the midst of everything he was going through. And just as Marcus, thank you every day for every situation, God, we yet come in this place. Some come for one thing and some come for another. Some may be ailing in their body, but God, we say thank you this morning. God, there are things that we don't understand sometimes in the family, God, but God, you being God almighty, some things we'll understand better by and by. Now, God, as we go into furtherance of this service, we pray for the manservant that will stand before these, your people, and give a word to these, your people, that we will live by and be more victorious in you. How we thank you and how we praise you for it's in Jesus' name we do say, we do pray. And the saints of God said, amen, 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 and amen. Come on and give God praise. Like so many that are in this room today, Marcus Stewart served this nation by wearing the fabric of this nation and serving as a member of the United States Marine Corps. The members of the armed forces always show their gratitude for a life well lived and service to this nation by having a uniformed member serving presently to come and to give honors to the deceased. At this time, we turn our attention to the United States Marine Corps that they might come and honor the life and legacy of Marcus Stewart.
and praise the Lord. And the name of this song simply says that I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. And it says, I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. It simply says that I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise him. to praise him. I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. I love to pray. 
Yeah! Certainly, the Lord is worthy to be praised. To the angel of this house, Dr. Balo, to our friend and brother, Pastor Adams, certainly to all of these clergy who are here, St. Matt South Liberty, Fairview Missionary Baptist Church to the class of 1968 down to my family. Before I, be I was a part of this family, I knew Marcus Stewart. He was my friend before I became my family, before he became my family. Let's go way back before 2000. And Marcus Stewart has always been Marcus Stewart. <laughs> and what I loved about him, he let me be who I am. So there ain't nothing else to say about that. I'm on to do words of encouragement to, to the Stewart, Garrett. I don't need to leave no family out. Come with your family. That, that, then I had to go home and deal with that. Chant, chant, chant to the family. My worries won't help you. I don't have my worries are not strong enough. Don't have no power. Sometimes because I talk so much, they don't mean nothing to nobody. 
by declare the desert word found in John 14. Now maybe y'all know y'all like the second part, but y'all that's a principle and a that's a promise and a principle. Now you can't get the promise till you recognize the principle. Jesus was talking to his disciples because he was getting ready to leave him. He said to them, if you love me and obey my commandments and I will pray to the Father that he will send another comforter, which means he'll say he's going to send another me, somebody to walk with you, somebody to be your bridge over troubled water, Somebody to wipe tears from your eye. Then he said. Then he also said he will abide with you. Not not just for a little while, family, but he will abide forever. Now most church folk think the spirit came to cause you to shout. My Bible ain't never said that. He'll teach you. He'll guide you, and he'll bring all things. That's to my room. That's called that's what I read now. But in other words, family, if you got the spirit, as a paraclete, he's walking beside you. Not just on this day, he walking tomorrow, he walking Tuesday, he walking Wednesday, he sure not walking Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, just to help you, to strengthen you. The Bible said that day by day. He gives strength. He ain't going to erase the pain, but he'll cause you to remember all those good days. I know how I stood with I know you're a praying woman because you had stood for your husband. I know you're praying now. I ain't, I ain't got to worry about you praying. And y'all look at me crazy. Y'all know Stuart. Hey, y'all, y'all, every, every class man, he got no Stuart. So I ain't, ain't going to get up like some folks on, on the field, you said, where, he, where we ain't never had no problem. Me and Stuart argued every time we met. <laughs> but our relationship stayed intact. I ain't had to apologize to him. And he, he wasn't so fragile. His feeling wasn't hurt mine either. So family, right. look to the hill. From whence cometh your help, your joy? Because when you read the end of this passage, what Jesus said to him, peace I leave you. My peace. The law of peace, not wrong peace. The law of peace. He will comfort you. He will strengthen you. In the morning when the joy comes, you'll be better. It ain't going to happen tonight, but you'll be better. I don't know when your joy going to come, Shannon. I don't know when none of the brothers joy going to come. But one thing I know the Bible says, yeah. weeping may endure for a night, but joy, anybody here, no joy going to come. You got to expect it's going to get better now. Trust in the Lord. If you all your heart, he'll keep you. He'll keep you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Middleton, for those beautiful words of encouragement. And y'all, it was hard for Ron to do that because I, we joke and we play, but we miss this man. Amen. This man is a blessing to so many of us and such a blessing in his own stubborn way. That's all I can think about, his own stubborn way. He just, he just a blessed, he blessed every last one of us. And I give God praise for his life, Shanton. You know, we loved him so this is an opportunity for all of us to share, uh, as many as would like to come into uh, to the podium and to share those things that will uplift the family at this time. We can't tell it all, but we certainly can say those things uh, that are going to be uplifting to the family. So you have been extended an opportunity to come and to do that. Please honor the family's request that this be no longer than two minutes per person. So come on and let the Lord lead you in this moment.
again. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I bring you greetings. Um, I graduated from a Kendall Theological Seminary, but one thing, uh, one of the most remarkable things I learned about Pastor Stewart, I didn't know he had a bad temper. <laughs> I, I know mine was bad. But we got ready to march at McKinley for our associate degree. And we was at Greater Northside there. And, and we was coming out from graduation and stood and the president got into it. And so we got back there for the pulling the robes out. And I said, Stuart, what's wrong, man? I said, what's going on? He done made me mad. <laughs> he done made you mad. I said, what did he say? Well, it's, 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 he, know he, he must don't know who he messing with. <laughs> I said, messing with? I said, man, we trying to get a bachelor degree. You need to calm down. I said, we ain't got but about a, one, a year and a half to go. I said, man, calm down. You hear me? He said, you know what? You're right. I said, we ain't here for him. We're here for us to get this degree. And when we get this degree, uh, then we're going for our master. He says, you coming to do your master program? I said, yeah. I said, but I ain't coming next year. It's going to be a year. I'm taking a year off. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me, he said, if you ain't coming back, I ain't coming back. God bless you. Very quickly, um, Pastor Frederick Walker happens to be a president of our Madison County Interdenominational Ministerial Lounge. Amen. Amen. And then we have also uh, Reverend Dr. Otis L. Davis, who is the uh, moderator of our Madison County Baptist Association. We ask all the pastors and preachers to please stand at this time. Amen. And, and our moderator is coming, but uh, while I have the floor, just three quick things, you may be seated, um, that, that I, I, I want to share um, with Stuart. We traveled all over this place, all over the United States, we, we travel. And we were in Houston, Texas in 2002 in a Walmart. And Stuart would, uh, you know, Stuart was so impatient. So we told, I, I told my wife, Shanton, and Sister Stuart, y'all going on. Five minutes in Walmart. Preacher, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Preacher, I'm ready to go. I said, man, just hold on. It's going to be all right. Just hold on. He said, Preacher, I ain't got to say but one word. And wife is coming. <laughs> I, I said, what do you mean? He said, you want, you, you want to hear it? He said, it's going to be loud. He said, wife. <laughs> I, I tried to get as far away from him as the east is from the west. <laughs> Young man um, um, talked about Stuart being comatose and myself and Don Milton, what you see him? Stuart opens up his eyes and, and looked at us. And I got to look around, but he says, he says to us, he said, I ain't never been so glad in my life to open up my eyes and see two ugly Negroes. <laughs> I walked out, bro, moderator. <laughs> this third thing, and I'm done. Had been in the hospital. It's out of the hospital. His love for Fabio. He gets up Sunday morning, drives to Fabio. So Stuart tells me, Pastor Kelly, he's been driving, and no, he he's not supposed to be driving. I said, Stuart, man, you've been driving. Did you see me driving? <laughs> I said, Stuart, you, you ain't been driving, man. I said, you've been driving. Did you see me driving? 
I said, no, I didn't see you driving. He said, well, how do you know I've been driving? I said, Stuart, you've been driving, man. He said, did you see me, see me driving? I said, Stuart, don't get, don't get behind the wheel again, man. He said, I don't care what nobody say. You didn't see me driving. He said, because I didn't see you see me driving. <laughs> Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want to take this opportunity on behalf of the Madison County Baptist Association of Churches to say to the Stewart family and to all the family of Pastor Stewart to say that we love you and we're here to support you. When Pastor Stewart retired from the Fairview Missionary Baptist Church, the Madison County Baptist Association, along with the General Missionary Baptist State Convention, pitched in and gave him uh, a farewell uh, uh, reception, uh, honor, amen. Dr. Jackson came down. He was president of state convention at that time and, and did the program for us. Pastor Stewart never forgot the Madison County Baptist Association of Churches. Even during the Passion Week, which we just had, Pastor Stewart sent his $50. That's just been two or three weeks ago. He sent his $50 and, and made sure that we got his $50 because we asked all pastors and ministry, ministers to give $50. Pastor Stewart never forgot what we did for him on his retirement. For 30 plus years, he served as pastor of the Fairview Missionary Baptist Church. And every time I saw him, I said, Pastor Stewart, he said, I'm not a pastor. I said, you always be a pastor. And we talk about how stubborn he was. Sometimes it's good to be stubborn. It's good to be stubborn because Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he said, be ye steadfast, unmovable. That's stubborn to me. <laughs> Nobody is going to move me for my faith. Yeah, he was stubborn, but he was also stubborn in the fact that nobody was going to move him off of that block. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For, some, for as much as we know. Our labor is not in vain in our Lord. That was stood. We thank God for all of you that have shared today. Certainly he was a man who meant so much to every last one of us. Official resolutions now will come from the class of 1968, followed by acknowledgement and resolutions by Sister Yvonne Jones. Would you all please come in that order? And all that make up this gathering, we, Rogers High School Class of 1968, Ken, Mississippi, would like to present a resolution honoring our dear classmate, Marcus Stewart. Now, I, what I'm about to say, I see they already standing. I know that some of you are going to get upset. I, I was about to say I want the greatest class to ever walk through the halls of Rogers High School, the class of 1968, please stand. There they are. Now that is my opinion. You may have your opinion, but that is my opinion. Okay, guys, you, you may be seated. Thank you. <clears throat> I, I won't read the resolution, uh, but I would like uh, to add on to what John said. A, a, a few words on behalf of our class summarizing the legacy of our dear classmate, friend, and brother in Christ. As a class, we are glad that our past 
cross markers. He was not a Hollywood movie star, but he was a star. He, like most of us, isn't widely known outside of his church, his neighbors, and his friends. But he loved God, his children, his family. He laughed easily and made you laugh also. He served generously, and we love being in his company. On a day like today, I think Marcus, a Baptist preacher, would hope that death would remind us to think soberly about living a, our life wisely. He would want us to know that no matter how long we live on this side, it is but a breath when compared to eternity. Hence, when one has lived a life well, especially for the honor and glory of Christ, the day of death will be a celebration, just as we are doing here today. As a matter of fact, Paul affirmed this reality with this command, lead a quiet and peaceful life in all your godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. And lastly, Marcus knew that sooner or later, the thread of life is going to break for all of us. And we all will be ushered into eternity. Therefore, to our dear classmate, friend, brother, uh, your preaching was not in vain. Your preaching changed the world. Thank you, Rogers High School, class of 1968. God bless you. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me and for all of us, my soul cries out hallelujah. Good afternoon, good morning, whatever time it is, good to you, good to you, good to you. I asked the funeral director, could they get that Reverend Stewart all in my face and stuff? I said, get him in the back because he thinks he runs stuff. He don't run nothing. He don't run nothing. <laughs> when I think about my uncle Reverend Marcus Stewart, I think of a mule. He was stubborn as a mule. Oh, he was so stubborn. And the things that he did around South Liberty, I said, he shouldn't do that. He knew he got that oxygen and stuff like that. But Stuart was preparing for, for last Monday night. He knew God was going to take him away. So he was preparing. We were saying he prayed too hard. Well, he, thank you. Do, thank you again, funeral director. <laughs> Y'all just outdoing yourself today. Get, get Stuart behind us now. Right there, Stuart. Right there, Reverend Stuart. But Reverend Stewart was a man that loved people. He loved children. Anything going on at this church, he made sure the children had money for pizzas or drinks or juices or whatever. Reverend Stewart not only that, but he loved the Lord and he loved his family. He knew he could depend on my Auntie Shan. If that had been me, I'd have divorced him a long time ago. <laughs> wipe it is, wipe it in. I said, Dog. Make me upset. I'm talking about his wife. Wife it. <laughs> But she understood her role, and she played it well. God bless you, Sister Shanta Stewart. Not only was she a preacher's wife, she was a mother, a nurturer. She just did whatever she could for Reverend Stewart. And I just thank God for you, Shant, and the family. I'm sure you all did your part, but I just know what I saw with my auntie Shant and her family and all of us. But Shan, I want you to know there are some ministers wives here today, and women, uh, women uh, these men at least ain't got no wives. They always acknowledge themselves, but you all got wives because you want to dress so well today if it hadn't been for your wife laying your clothes out. <laughs> so I'm asking all the preachers and uh, preachers' wives, ministers' wives, you, would you all stand, please? Stand up, ministers' wives, preachers' wives. <laughs> Me and these were your wives right there, okay. <laughs> Shan, I just want you to know you got support from the women, from the women of uh, Madison County. We thank you all so much. 
And uh, Reverend Stewart was just like a Timex watch. He'd take a licking and keep on ticking. You know, he'd go in the hospital, and then you look up here at church. <laughs> then he remind me of the Energizer Bunny. He just keep going and going and going and going. And it, times he thought he should have stayed at home, he was at church. But he knew, he knew what he was doing. So we just need to prepare ourselves to, go, to be able to go where he is because he was ready. And then everybody was talking about the total solar eclipse Monday. Did y'all see it? I missed it, but my uncle gave me an eclipse that night because he died that night. I said, Reverend ain't going to let nothing out do him. <laughs> everybody was talking about the solar, total solar eclipse. <laughs> and he went on the glory that night. But I just thank God for the life of my uncle, Reverend Marcus Stewart. And he would look at me some Sunday and say, am I pretty? I said, yes, sir, Unc, you pretty ugly. That's what I would tell him. <laughs> but he was a man. He was a good man. He knew he was ugly because he always said it, you know. He wasn't ugly. He wasn't ugly. He just didn't favor nothing. But, he <laughs> but God bless him. God bless him. God bless him. But they didn't ask me to do that. I suppose we were doing a resolution. Uh, resolution. Resolution, resolution, resolution. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. He will grant you the measure of power and grace that you need during this grievous time. Whereas, it has been, it has been the will of our almighty God to remove from this life Reverend Marcus Stewart. It is with heartfelt sympathy that we offer that the officers and members of South Liberty Missionary Baptist Church extend our prayers and words of comfort to the Stewart family. Bearing the loss of a loved one brings complex feelings. However, it is comforting to know that the Lord sustains us all. Whereas, though effectually, his effectual testimony and conduct of Reverend Marcus Stewart demonstrated a life of personal relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And whereas Reverend Marcus Stewart was a man with a giving spirit and a heart for people, he was a servant who had the quality of spirit to work here on earth and still be inspired by the hope of heaven. Reverend Marcus Stewart served this community as pastor of Fairview Missionary Baptist Church for many years. He was a loving father, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, uncle, and friend. He was a vital part of this community, making an impact with his teaching and preaching of the word of God. He faithfully served South Liberty Missionary Baptist Church as son of the house under various pastors. We saw the things of God for which he stood and felt his compassion for Christ through his unique worship style, the way he prayed, with power and authority, his dedication to the youth and minister, the ministries of this church. Reverend Stewart was a proud, independent man and beloved member of this church. He was grateful that God allowed us to use, he was grateful that God allowed him to use him in such a way. Be it resolved that we embrace this bereaved family in our common bond of grief and remembrance of the beloved soul whose legacy of faith and service will continue to inspire his loved ones and this community. Be it also resolved that, we find, that you find comfort in each other loving memory of our dear brother, Reverend Marcus Stewart, and peace through your faith in the only wise and almighty God who knows and does all things well. Be it further resolved that this tribute of respect bear some comfort to all, and that a copy of this resolution is placed with our archives and a copy presented to the family. Humbly submitted April the 15th, 2024, South Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Antoine D. Barlow, pastor, and D Brother Christopher L. Brown, chairman of our deacon ministry. There have been several cards given, several cards given to the Stewart family and the Interdenominational inter Ministry Alliance and other cards that has been given, and I'll make sure Ms. Stewart gets these. Acknowledgement, we the family of the late Reverend Marcus Stewart would like to thank you for all acts of kindness that have been bestowed upon us, our family, through calls, cards, and flowers. Thank you for your support during our time of loss. 
Your presence helps to lighten our burden. Special thanks to Sonny Montgomery VA Medical Center, Reverend Antoine Barlow, and the South Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. The repast will be held here at South Liberty in our fellowship hall. The interment will take place at the Canton City Cemetery. An arrangement has been trusted to People's Undertaking Company. May God bless you and may God keep you and continue to keep the Stewart family in your prayers. They will need you way beyond today. So God bless you and God keep you. And let me tell you this before I sit down. Tuesday morning, Reverend Stewart died Monday night, but Tuesday morning before I got up, Reverend Stewart came to me and he said, Yvonne, he looked at me and he smiled. He said, Yvonne, don't tell nobody. I said, man, the news is already out. And I woke up and I said, what? I said, he's trying to run stuff now. I said, I'm telling everybody. I got on my phone and I started texting everybody. Rem, rem, I just started texting everybody. And it just hit me so hard, but he smiled. He looked at me, he winked his eye, and he smiled, and he turned his head. So I'm, I'm just okay with Reverend Stewart being gone because I know he's with the Lord. So God bless you and God keep you and family. Just continue to stay and pray for each other. God bless you. God has always stood by my side. He has always been my God. 
let the church say praise the Lord. Let us say praise the Lord again. Let us say praise the Lord again. To this pastor, pulpiteers here and there, uh, to this bereaved family, I got a call and said that he had gone home. And the next call I got was that he wanted me to do the eulogy. So I'm here to do what I was asked to do. There were some things about Stuart that I didn't hear from the audience. We, uh, Kelly said we went all over the country uh, with the National Baptist Congress and I trailed Stuart one, one year and we had went through Memphis and on 40, headed to Indianapolis. And he was wiggling. So I pulled my van up beside him, shanty sleep, children sleep, and steward sleep. And he was supposed to be driving. <laughs> so we started blowing the horn, blowing the horn, blowing the horn. And, and finally woke him up. He pulled over and said, everybody else was asleep. <laughs> the, the very next year, we were going to Baltimore. And I, I decided my wife was working. I said, well, I stay at home. Steward called, Adam, I, I need a help driver. I need you to help me drive. And uh, I said, uh, nobody else going to drive but you? I, I, I said, you know, I'll, go, I'll, go with, I'll go with you. And uh, something you don't know, I, I helped him drive to Baltimore, a uh, van load of children. They got two rooms. All the ladies were in, the, all the children, the, the girls were in the room with Shanta. And all of the boys was in the room with Stuart. Only one bed <laughs> in both rooms. I said, Stuart, what, what we going what we going sleep on? He said, the carpet? And I want you to know that sometimes the church didn't give them enough money. And they came out of their pocket to feed those children all week long. And I think that was admirable. Would you join me? I need thee, O oh Lord. I need thee. Yeah. Every I don't know about you. I come to to thee. For those of you that have your Bibles, we'd like for you to know Second Corinthians chapter five. Reading one verse, looking at the surrounding verses. Paul says, for we know. 
that if this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. I want to talk about the other building. The, the other building. Twelve fifteen. Be through by twelve thirty. What knowledge do we possess concerning life and afterlife? We dwell here in a bodily form. But how do we live in the next life? Well, the scripture tells us the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Because of the sin of Adam, we all have been born under the judgment of of sin. God's son paid the price. And only by believing in him can you obtain eternal life. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Paul declared, flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom. I, I wish I had a witness here. This passage presents the Christian certainty as to our future by what is occurring in your life today. So you can't blame God. The direction you went in was your choice. The spirit-filled Christian Longs to be clothed in a body fit for eternal life. The question of life after death is not answered by metaphysics, not answered by philosophy, but by revelation from the one who created all of us. God knows the eternal plan. God has the ability to prepare us for that plan. God alone is the source of life and immortality. He's from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. He's provided a way out. A way of redemption for the sin-sick soul. Paul here says, we know. Not something I speculated on. We know. I'm not imagining something. We know. I wish I had a witness here. Pacific knowledge which is a granted to every believer. It's not human intellect. But this belief rises from a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I wish I had a witness here. The Bible will be laid to rest one day, and we're given another body like the Feast of the Tabernacles for the children of Israel, who spent their week celebrating their crossover in tents. We have a tent. I wish I had a witness here. It is the only house we've ever known. But we don't have to worry about God's got another building prepared for his children. 
this tent goes through pain and suffering. If you don't have any pain, keep on living. Goes through sickness, trials, and tribulation. But this new body comes with a list of no more. No more pain. No more separation. No more getting old, weak and frail. No more burden. No more trials and tribulation. I wish I had a witness here. If you're not with me, you better get with me. Because I'm on my way home. Paul said, this house of this tabernacle shall dissolve. He said, we know that we have a building not made with earthly hands, but eternal in the heavens. That's why we sing sometime some glad morning when this life is over. Ah, ah, I'll fly away. What a word. Amen. 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 As our funeral de directors prepare to come, won't you lift your voice? Some glad morning, I'll fly away. Mm -hmm. Some 